it's a it's a long term thing. They're not really good at the long ball. Libertarians aren't situation. good with the aren't good with the longest view in the room. No, no. But you know who always has the longest view in the room? Who's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was adorable. A little. Thank you. I just I just got done watching the pajama game with uh, with oh, my fiance. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> So I'm in a very 50s, holy shit, this is all about unions, what the fuck is going on, kind of a move. <laughs> go unions, you know. I, we are I, Go we, unions, I, it's so pro-union, and it came out in 57, I can't believe that none of them had to stand before Joseph McCarthy. For oh that yeah, shit. I mean, it might have been too, uh, too, uh, I don't know. Was it was it was it obviously pro-union, or oh, was it? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, oh yes. Like, literally, the bad guy is the boss, and he calls them all a bunch of communists. Mm. That's right on uh, the, that's right on the tin, right there. It is very, (laughs) all that's missing is Sally Field holding up a sign that says Union on it. That's, like, all that's missing. It, it's based on a novel called Seven and a Half Cents, because that's what these people are asking for, an extra seven and a half cents. Oh, wow added to their hourly wage. That's the whole plot line. And a, and a woman who works with the Union and a man who's one of the manager head bashers ends up falling in love. And that's the So plot. it's Romeo and Juliet, but for unions and corporate corporations. I mean, I wanted to kill myself by the time it was <laughs> over. But yeah. It wasn't great. <laughs> it was just surprising, that's all. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't a good movie. It was just surprising. <laughs> no, it was just, I'd never even heard I, I'd heard of the pajama game. Like when you're in high school musicals, you always hear about the school across town is doing the pajama Ooh. game. Everyone does the pajama yeah. game. And I never knew what it was about. And me and my fiance this this month are watching nothing but films that are um adapted from the stage oh, that's our that's, little challenge. that's your that's your theme for the month it's it's really cute exactly. the, when, and i just got to say for everybody who doesn't know uh phil and his fiance every month or seasonally it would be probably more specific yeah it's more like take. a seasonal thing they watch uh specific movies so for for it was spooky movies in october and then like yep. november into december it was how it was a it was a christmas movie every night and it was the most god awful Christmas movies. They were so bad. <laughs> it's the ones that you're thinking of that are just like you know, uh, they're made in like a week, and that's true. They're yes. they're made in seven to ten days. That's the shooting time. The, the directors have little to no say in anything that happens. It's just like there's a there's a house style that is handed to them. And they're like, you got to do this. Yeah. Um, so there's those. Every now and then, one of them will do something kind of subversive. Right. Uh, and you start to notice because you start to notice the patterns yeah. and every now and then one of them will do something that is like totally anti the pattern. And me and Emily go, whoa, wait a minute. That wasn't supposed yeah, to happen. It, it's so <laughs> funny. And, and it's hilarious because by the end of because we did, we did two months of holiday movies and we had to we had to space out the good right. ones. You know, your white Christmas, your christmas story you know your christmas vacation you have to space those out because most of them are hot garbage and we will just scream at the television and make fun of it and (laughs) shout and get so pissed off and then it literally it's been what has it been it's been almost three weeks since we watched our last holiday movie and i'm already like kind of looking forward to november that was fun like it's so pitiful We've done that's our we've done that two years in a row now, and and this and the, and we decided we're like you know what, let's 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 keep doing the challenges but let's let's try something else and we we were doing yeah stage Set, adaptations. stage adaptations that's a good that's a good choice it's a lot easier you know, there's so many of them too there's so many so you you there's a lot more quality especially right in, right in the fifties like there was like yeah. two a week well we 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 read we. We keep trying these 50s, 60s ones. Like we did the pajama game. That was a bust. Yeah. Uh, and, and I said, damn Yankees. I remember seeing damn, oh, damn Yankees. Yankees is kid. That's- boring as hell. It was awful. It's so bad. It's literally about a guy who gives his soul to the devil to play baseball. And then it gets weird. <laughs> like it's just, It was awful. 
awful. <laughs> it was just so bad. And and uh, and and like these are classic movie musicals that we're like, what is? There's happening? like a bunch of musicals that are on the AFI Top 100, which is a garbage list. It's it's just a garbage list. Um, mm. But there's a bunch of them that are in the Top 100 that are just like they don't belong there. There's like some really old dude like remembered seeing it when he was a child and was right. like and was like this belongs on the list and be like sure okay maybe it was foundational at one point but it is it right. is it is such a soft foundation <laughs> it's nearly unwatchable at this point it yeah. is like the foundation of the the tower of pisa <laughs> yeah and, and it's well and the funniest thing about when you do uh staged when you do stage shows and stuff like that when you're watching movie adaptations of them you you it the, you get whiplash in the theme and the tone because like we watch damn yankees we watch a funny thing happen on the way to the forum which is just a total farce sure. and zero mostel and and it's the 60s and it's all the worst parts of the 60s <laughs> and uh and you're like jesus christ and then and then we watched fences with Denzel and, and Viola Davis, and it's fucking magnificent sure. and very strong and serious, yeah. and, uh, and and you're like, oh god, I, we need to warm ourselves up a so little. So you're not bit. just doing do musicals; shit. it's stage. No, it's no, no, stage, stage plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So and, and it's always a good opportunity to. You just, just could throw the, to watch the new. Um, if you wanted to, you could throw the new West Side Story. In, yeah, in that and list. we went and saw that in the oh, okay. theaters actually. We love yeah. it. We, 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 it, it's, I found out the other day, she told me that it's not doing well. No, it didn't do well didn't at all. Well. It's a, it's a sin. It's a yeah. sin. It's a magnificent film. If you guys are listening and you haven't seen West Side Story, watch West Side yeah, Story. It, uh, this is, by the way, this is me and Kevin's uh, movie theater. This is our movie. Now. Yeah. We, we talk about theater. <laughs> we talk about movies. Um, no, actually. Uh, it's all adaptation. Really. <laughs> it is all adaptation, you know? Uh, call me Charlie Kaufman because it's all adaptation to me. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, today we're we're talking about uh, we're we're doing part three of our Halo: The Flood uh, series by New York's time New York Times bestselling author William C. Dietz. What's yes. Dietz? William C. Dietz, and uh, where we last left off. Um, yeah. uh, flipping back because, of course, I didn't mark the page like a fool. Like, like a, fool. a fool. I gotta go through all my notes on Mega Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> Air Man. Jesus. Um, it's like 160 or something. There we go. Chapter 6. That's it. Yes. Chapter 6. The the spine, like, is all messed up now on my book so i'm i'm folding it like a you got it you got to break it i broke that spine him. like like bane breaking batman's back bring me the bat <laughs> yeah so um chapter bat. 6 is where we last yes. la last where we left off last episode and um it's a uh, it's a mckay chapter to begin with it's a mckay section and uh, she's talking yeah. about how she's uh, they're basically they got these vehicles are driving and um, she's like, you know what? I'm not going to hide these vehicles. We're just going to drive in formation and because uh, we can't. Um, yeah. So they're getting well, they don't really have much choice. They don't choice. really have yeah. much choice. Um, basically, they're they're heading towards Alpha Base and they're setting up for what is going to be a confrontation with yeah. the Covenant. And this is a big time yeah, covenant in covenant sending response. They are covenant. Moment. Yeah, this is post the pillaging of the pillar of autumn. That was too many P's in a sentence. Um, <laughs> and uh, covenant. The prospects are the poor pros at the pillar of autumn. <laughs> post pillage of the pillar. Um, yeah. So that's happening. I apologize for the P's. Uh, the one thing I really noted uh, was, uh, and I hate this. Um, <laughs> it's always a good it's, start. And I hate this is um, is is quoting that psalm. Uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the oh. shadow of death, and Come I on, thought man. it would have like... been better and slash uh, more hilarious, but just better overall if she said, "It's like that Coolio lyric." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
No, I because this is like what is it's it's it, what's, what's the year? That it they, is. This is uh, I don't know the year. It's like twenty five something. I don't know. Yeah, it's hundreds, hundreds of, years. of years in the it's future. It's like it's a long time, and and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the Warhammer forty k reference out of the way right early. off the top. Um, when you when you read the stories of forty k, it's 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 the it's like literally the year forty thousand. You know, it's, and uh, and they uh, still have pieces of the oldest civilizations and everything like that. And so you'll get like quotes in there every now and then. And it'll be like a William Shakespeare quote, but the name will have shifted over the years. And so it will be William Shakespeare, <laughs> you know, poet of the ancient time before the Dark Ages. You know, it just it's they, it, it's it's stuff like I wish they would have done that because that's what happens. That's what happens. It'd be a different. These people wouldn't be speaking English. It would be a totally different language by yeah. now, you know, yeah. and it would be. And even if they were speaking English, their version of English would be nothing like ours. Exactly. And I guess deeds didn't work. Yeah. I mean, that's, that that's like if you're if you're creating your own IP and you're going to create a series and like you are really getting into the world building and lore building and all that stuff, mm -hmm. then, yeah, you would probably start mucking about with stuff like that, yeah. where it's like yeah. changing syntax of words and, and all that. Right. But but he was like, he was like, let Bungie worry about yeah. that. I'm not. But uh, that being said. Um, I hate, I hate that Psalm being quoted in things, um, because it, it's just so trite one, it? at this point, yeah. it gets used so often. Um, and also nobody ever finishes it. They just say the first part and oh, yeah. like, if you're going to reference it, just, it's like five more words. <laughs> It gets it gets really gaudy, and and so they're like they're like we don't want to we don't want to get it's into like the whole the, Jesus It's like thing. the the rod and the the shepherding, and be like, and I'm not afraid. The rod and the staff they comfort me. The rod and the me. staff they comfort me, and I am not afraid. And let's face it, let's face it, out of context, thy rod it comfort little gay, little gay. <laughs> and we all know Spartans ain't gay. That's just it's been. Uh, <laughs> I think it's been proven. I, I I beg to differ. I think I think the Spartans would be, um, well, they're named after a Greek. You mean you you mean to tell me that someone named after the Spartans might be a little by curious? <laughs> they like they're you know they have a they have, they're very open minded. The Spartans they are. They that are is that. one thing they are that, that actually that is the one thing that they're very much not as open minded. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, uh, uh, yeah, McKay is comforted by the rod, and uh, oh, of course, she is moving on with her convoy. Um, Psalms yes. weren't going to win the coming fight; firepower would. It's, sounds Which, like a heretic you know and a non-believer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just, just curse God and yeah. die. Uh, yeah, and and we get uh, we get a little we get a little cut to. Uh, some covenant Pop. troopers, yeah. uh, a, uh, a, 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 I only wrote Mort, uh, in here. What's, what was the full name? More to me. <laughs> more to me, which is, which is what I had actually on my Tinder profile for years. There's more to me, uh, than the profile picture suggests. Just pounds upon pounds. Wasn't the picture of you with the, with the, like the purple, um, uh, like suede jacket, like smoking jacket. On. Oh, my velour, 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 smoking, velour jacket? smoking jacket. Yes, I look good in that. We're gonna. Have, I'll have to wear. You're gonna that have to wear that. To the, yeah, to the next stream. Um, and and for the show, you're gonna have to. If we ever do a live show, that's gonna have to be your. Oh God, yes. All right, yeah. <laughs> if if we do a live show, that is on the table. Uh, so he's watching them. Uh, with he's all he's all he's there with a, a field uh master, field commander, basically. Yeah. And uh, who basically accuses him of being a spy. Uh, he basically, he's trying to be cool about it. He's like, like very calm, but he basically says, you know, like, I know you're here to watch yeah. me just as you are as much as much as you are meant to watch them. Yeah. We got another like example of, of maybe Some of the, uh, yeah. Covenant isn't always Covenant is a little yeah. paranoid. A little it's, paranoid. It, he's less of a spy and more of like a bureaucrat. He's he's basically yeah. like a number cruncher who's just there to like like look just rate the effectiveness of their guys versus the effectiveness of the enemy 
and he just just Pretty that's much. all he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that's all he's doing. So we get that moment, and then and then we got lots of we got, oh so uh, much got fighting, so much it's, fighting battle between now the, the Covenant forces. Yeah. This scene, I would this sequence is uh, per our longstanding rule. We're not gonna get into all the nitty gritty, nope. uh, but it's actually this is probably one of my favorite battle sequences in the book because it was because of the way it's written and and it has a lot of variety in terms of the stuff that happens in it it's not just like there's an engagement and and they're fighting um so yeah they yeah deets deets likes to kill them in various ways Uh, he does (laughs) yeah um so one of my favorite things that happens is at, at some point there's a uh, lance corporal who gets thrown from from a warthog and he's he's getting uh he's trying to figure out you know what do i got to do and he gets gets back to the warthog and he finds a sniper rifle and he takes it yes. and it's like check off sniper rifle so he takes it and he yeah and he hides we it know that's coming and around. We, we know that's going to come back around and then um a couple of scenes later <laughs> A couple of this is this later, is a great it's so scene. good is is Mort Morty boy the spy is is talking to the field field master the field commander and uh, he's like uh, they're they're blah 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 and um, he's and Mort is like talking to the is basically saying you're doing a bad job like they're winning yeah, and I'm gonna report how I'm bad writing a report on how bad of a job. Mort's head explodes from the sniper shot that was set up yeah. a few scenes earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just it does it and, and that's the thing. For it and that's not important no. to the grand no, scheme of the story. <laughs> it's not gonna come back for any reason. It was just Dietz was like, we're having another fight scene. Let's make it interesting. Let's just do some fun stuff in here. Let's put some skin in the game here with like some weird ass bureaucrat and like like th- these people really aren't going to come up all that much. And uh and he just gives you a personal taste for this big ass fight that happens. Yeah. Uh it's it's fantastic. And eventually uh the humanity makes it to this gap uh and and basically uh, pushes back the covenant yeah. forces there. The, the- so it's a the covenant. It's humanity. a victory for for the UNSC, um, and the covenant has to retreat. Um, yeah. And then finally, we get we we jump back and we're we're with Master Chief, um, as we should. as we should be. Actually, it was like it was almost like a letdown to be back with Master Chief after that battle sequence because it was a little because bit, this yeah. sequence that plays out in, in, for Master Chief is very. Um, very straightforward from the game because i've been replaying the game now to to kind of catch up to where we are in the book and it's like i was i i had just finished the silent cartographer mission and then i was reading it in the book and like oh yeah this is not changing a whole lot (laughs) nope nope and it doesn't really because because frankly and we've talked about this before but deets is doing the right thing here because the first Halo game was revolutionary for its time, but looking back on it, it's just like a lot of rooms that kind of look the same. Yeah, especially and, if you play the if you play the anniversary edition and you flip yeah. over to the old version, you're like playing the new version of the game. And you're like, oh man, it's so gorgeous. This is this is what it looked like back in two. Th- and then you flip over. Oh uh, no, no, it was just a lot of. You're like, oh Jesus, uh, it was just a lot of gray walls. <laughs> It was a, it was it just a lot of sludge, and yeah. So we're gonna get eventually to a point where, for those of you who joined us for uh, the first Halo book for the Fall of Reach, we are going to get back to a point where Master Chief is a little more introspective and thinking about the things that are going on. We are not there. We yet. are not there yet. Uh, for now, it is him. Looking for the silent cartographer, killing lines of jackals and grunts and all those occasional hunters. And it, He's blowing hunters up yeah. with rocket launchers, which will get increasingly easy as it goes. For some somehow reason. he just we're gonna get hunters to that. just yeah. became um uh a pretty easy um 
thing because there's at one point where he yeah. kills there's kind of a very cinematic moment in this sequence where he kills a hunter while standing in the ocean like the and yeah, it's it's yeah, kind of yeah. a it's kind of a pretty neat like he's he's up to his like knees in the ocean when the waves are coming in and he blows up a hunter yeah. with a rocket launcher and there's blood the hunter's blood is spewing into the water um that's kind of cool it's really yeah. cool um and then he kills the and, bond and, brother with like there's like a sentence dedicated to it he's like oh he took the next one's head and, off but- <laughs> right and it only gets easier as he goes like like and i think part of it was like you know i i want I, part of it's because you start to realize you face these hunters kind of a yeah. lot there are no bosses in the first halo game the hunters kind of serve as the closest thing yeah. you have to bosses yeah. and i i wanted i i wish that he would have just used them less frequently sure. we run into them a lot and so for necessity the writer deets just starts he kind of makes them easier and easier. we'll get into that in a second but like they just get easier and easier to kill and you just want to go just make them rarer it doesn't matter no one's going to like count well actually you know what i take it back gamers may take this book and go all right there were four hunters in between <laughs> here that you skipped and so i take it all back maybe maybe he did need to be that uh precise on a precise yeah, pedantic he, what do you you know Right, whatever. whichever <laughs> so yeah he blows up a couple of hunters with the rocket launcher uh blames himself briefly for the death of a couple of, of marines that had joined him in a war yeah. dog. and uh and we have an interesting we do have an interesting moment there where he's just mentally thinking to himself that he that uh, he's to blame and cortana almost reads his mind and literally says out loud you know you you're not to blame for this right which is interesting on a certain level. It is, level. yeah. Because they're, sh- they're sharing a, a brain place. Uh, they, so, are, they are, yeah. yeah. Um, so they, they continue um, the firefight through. It's it's If you played Halo, it's a silent cartographer level, you know? They're, which is a great level to be is playing. It is a great level to be playing. N- not always a great level to be reading about. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, we uh, yeah, we're 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 making our way gets, down. Master, Master Chief. Chief gets wounded pretty bad at one point in this yeah. in this sequence. Um, whether that pays mm-hmm. off in an interesting way later, I don't know. Uh, we don't know yet because uh, we're not there. Yeah. But he has to actually take his armor partially off to uh, plug a wound that he gets from uh, from. I think he gets he gets like ambushed or something like that. Um, yeah, he gets, he gets, he gets, uh, it was, it's another yeah. hunter basically who like, I, I, he get he gets him like chink in his armor or something like that. And he has to yeah. use that good old phone to fill up the, the wound. Right. Um, uh, and, uh, Cortana's pretty sure they're being tracked because it feels like everywhere they go, uh, they're running into these things. Right. Um, which is a fair, uh, that's word. a fair assessment of, of their situation. Uh, yeah, and we do get a little lip service to Cortana being kind of worried um, that she's pushing Master Chief too sure. far, uh, which isn't a lot. And we do get here uh, as he's healing himself up. This is I felt like Kevin. You'll probably agree with me when you hear the quote. This is a very important uh, moment. Uh, in minutes, he had suited up, popped a wake up stim, and moved on. Uh, Master Chief does blow. <laughs> What else is a wake up stand? Like, you can't tell me he had a he had a quick espresso, uh, had himself a nice hot well, americano. Well, the Mjolnir gone. armor has an espresso machine built into it. It does. It looks that <laughs> it way, does. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he just like he just like bends the elbow and like espresso yeah, starts sh- dripping it, <laughs> the steam it's, and all it's that. Beautiful. It's a it's a beautiful sight. Oh, it's, and it's and when really he's taking the armor off and like patching himself up, um. Uh, he couldn't see it, but Cortana was like was like hugging him from behind, and Unchained right. Melody was playing. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And then when the espresso is made, it comes out in a little paper cup, and Cortana holds out and goes, "Master Chef, Master Chef, <laughs> got espresso for Master Chef." <laughs> All right, I think we're. Good. I think uh, I think we've killed that scene. <laughs> 
If we we just I think that horse is good and so fairy. in the next scene, um, the the covenant is reinforcing, but Master Chief finds the the button. Basically, it's the end of the silent, mm-hmm. silent cartographer level where you find the map uh, that tells you where yes. the control um, center is, and yep. and word for word, you get the end of that moment with. Uh, with Cortana paging Captain Keys and Fohammer responding, Captain has dropped out of contact, Cortana. His ship may be out of range or maybe having equipment problems. Um, yep. yep. And what do you think, I, Kevin? I think he's captured by the Covenant again. Again? <laughs> Fucking Captain Load is more <laughs> like it. And it's just Come on, Keys staring. Um, and the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. Yeah, yeah. Directed by Robert B. Weedy. <laughs> Just, jeez, come on. Come on, man. Jacob. Jake, Jake the Snake Keys. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which. He's listening to the incessant uh, slam beat, slam bam beat of the Sergeant's Colonial Flip music. Yeah, which... Doesn't tell me anything about what it sounds like. What is that? Like, <laughs> what is that? That is literally, ladies and gentlemen, that is literally how they describe it. Slam bam. The slam bam beat. The slam bam beat. Um, is that is that the the soundtrack? It the Halo is soundtrack. The soundtrack. Oh, the slam bam Yeah. But that's not how I describe it. It's kind of more orchestral and beautiful with with a good drum section. Yeah. Uh, so they they they've interrogated uh, a covenant grunts for information they're basically they're searching throughout this structure trying to find some sort of a is it like a cache yeah of weapons yeah they're looking like for that? covenant weapons that they can take and kind of reinforce their own weapons um because they're right. running out of you know they're running out of bullets and armor and etc so they might as well start using covenant stuff um, right so basically right. this guy uh this prisoner is like fine there's like a uh there's like a building uh, in the middle of a swamp. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, right. all right, let's go check it out. And yeah, they find themselves in this structure and we get the standard. I, I'm not feeling so good about this kind of yep. moment. And, Stow it, uh, Marines. Right. <laughs> Stow it. Stow that bullshit, Hudson. <laughs> And uh, and suddenly they are swarmed uh, by uh, what uh, those of us who have played the game know as the flood. Yeah, those little, little blobby dudes just come in and start start uh, possessing people left and right. Yeah. Just give them spinal Rana marines, certain needles, spinal in taps right into the right into the back. Um, right. And uh, it's not a good sight. Um, it's 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 really unfortunate. Uh, Jacob, he, Captain Keys is possessed. Everybody's possessed by these, these, uh, these flood, flood monsters. And um, yeah, the we got a the horror, uh, a, a horrific moment at the end. Jenkins helpless to do anything about it. Um, by the way, there's a Jacob, Jenkins, and Johnson in this scene, and yeah, that's that like was, violating. Yeah. There's like some internal rule that I have about like not reusing the letter, especially do within a scene, just because try to try avoid, to avoid it. it. It's, There's it's, too many J's. It's just a real. I'm not saying that you you don't know people with a bunch of the same first letter in the names. I'm saying if you have the choice, you got five characters and you you get to choose what their name. Do yourself a favor. Pick a different letter for each one of them. Pick a different letter because Jenkins. Um, Anyway, Jenkins, uh, he screamed and the air left his lungs, but no one turned to look. Yeah. Yeah. I have a mouth and I must scream, but nobody cares. That's the, that's the. That's, that was the next, you see, if they would just just read. Book, next door. The next few words, (laughs) thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, but nobody cares. (laughs) Like that's just they, if they would just keep nobody cares. Book. Harlan Ellison. Yeah, <laughs> Harlan. I don't think Harlan Ellison definitely cares. does not care. Harlan Ellison only cares if you owe him money. Um, so, chapter seven yeah, though. So guess who's guess yes. who's back? 
Well, it, it, it's, it's Danny Zuko, but Danny but Zuko. You know what that means? What does that mean? That means yeah, yap. <laughs> yeah, yap, yeah, yap, yeah, yap lives. Yeah, yap lives. Um, so uh, Zuko is a may may, zamimi, whatever. Um, he's in the yeah. in the council chambers, and uh, this is a this grim is a grim scene. scene. Totally pitch black in there. He walks in. And he's like, yep. hey, he got called in there. What's up? And uh, nothing happens until another spotlight comes on. And his his superior, his old superior officer, Rolami, the guy who talked to the council into letting uh, Zuka do whatever he wanted. Like just the head, right. his head on a spear appears. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they tell him and it's kind of ridiculous because they tell him like his the elders or whatever, are like telling Zuka like that. He, his head's on a plate literally for his failure. Yeah. His failure to do anything. And they're upset with Zuko, with Danny Zuko, because of his failure, his inability to bring down the Master Chief. And I wanted to go, oh, now, now you're worried about the, the Master yeah. Chief. My man Zuko came in there and was trying to warn you. You didn't trust him the first time. Finally, you half heartedly yeah. gave him permission. To, and now you're, oh, you fucking you. assholes. The Covenant sucks. I know that's an unpopular opinion. Covenant yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fuck them, man. Fuck the covenant. Yeah, you know what I got to say. Uh, fuck the covenant. Um, Don't like them very much. I know that they are the enemy of humanity, and they've murdered millions upon millions of humans. Uh, I was, I was tolerating. I was giving them uh, uh, the, the benefit. Yeah, I was of the giving doubt. them their space to learn and, and grow and adjust. But then exactly. I learned that they are also shitty bureaucrats. And that was a and then line I too was far. Like, you know what? <laughs> no, man. The straw and the paraplegic camel. Mm-mm. No, <laughs> that sir. That camel is broken. That camel is broke. Um, so we got, we, we're, we're back with Master Chief after... Uh, right. we, we do get yeah yap in the scene but it's just like a sentence yeah yap is very very brief uh we get a way better yeah there's much uh, on, so. there's better yeah yap coming stay, of, stay much tuned better for yeah more to come. For better yeah yap um yes <laughs> not this scene so, with master yeah, chief so, who cares no but he's still just on his way to find the command yeah. uh center for the silent cartographer and now he's in that cold uh, area that you're in as you're going to find the command center. And it's literally beat yep. for beat that level, including like you're yes. crossing the bridge. And there's mm -hmm. there's literally written in here justification for all the weird shapes and cover that you find on the bridge as you're yeah. <laughs> crossing it. It's a little, it's a little weird. weird. I would have just ignored it and just said, oh, he fights across the bridge. But no, that uh, Dietz writes in the the blocks that are on the bridge for no which, reason which okay yeah. sure so yeah uh, he crosses uh, finds his way past the bridge onto a lift fights a tank uh as he's getting closer to a bunch of pinned marines yep. uh which you probably recognize uh they he and the marines take out the tank and take the valley the valley is theirs and here's another uh hilarious moment kind of a wink to the audience cortana Basically says there are a lot of valleys just like this yeah. one, uh, so you're gonna they're you're gonna go from valley to valley, freeing marines and uh, probably killing a lot of covenant along the way. And then and, at uh, the end, we do get a, you get the you reach the all valley tournament, and right. you have to face off against uh, Johnny Lawrence and Cobra Kai. <laughs> I was literally gonna make a Cobra Kai joke. I was like, whatever he says next. I'll add and Cobra Kai, and then you fucking. This is why we're on the show together. This is why this. This is why this works. God damn it. Um, and then um, so Matt, he sweeps the get, leg, uh, we, and he sweeps the leg, and we do we get we do get a nice little little bit of an introspective moment for Master Chief at the end of this section, uh, where it's clear that he's just happy to be part of a team. Yeah, again. he's happy to be fighting alongside the Marines instead of being a one man wrecking crew. Um. You know, so he's 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 enjoying his time with those damn good those Marines. damn good men. Yes. Yeah. Um, watch those trees. This the ain't next, no picnic. The next, right. Well, I wrote down in the next section. I wrote down Silva and McKay, and then nothing else. 
I don't remember <laughs> what happened here. I don't think it mattered all that much in the grand scheme of things. Oh, it um it 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 matters because it is um it's the lead up to finding Yayap. Mm. Okay, yes. That that's, that is that's that the is, only thing that matters. That is important. Is okay, is important. so Yayap is laying in a pot in a wreckage of of yes. a ghost, I believe. Um uh, he, he's been planted, he's been planted there, there yeah. as if he's dying. Um they right. basically <laughs> Zuka <laughs> Zuka beat him so he looked like he yep. was in a crash and left him there. In in no way taking any pleasure in it, by the way. <laughs> and Yayab's there to get picked up because they believe that the uh Marines are gonna take prisoners, which they do. Um, but Yayab's yep. like, maybe they don't take prisoners and I'll just die. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's like that would be pretty good too, right? Like that means I would if I died instead, that would be all right. Uh, and he's but he's got a, he's got a signal beacon attached to his uh, his uh, breathing apparatus, his, like, breathing yeah. apparatus. <laughs> so the the idea is they want him to be captured so they can track him and all. I that like this stuff. line. Yes, Zim, uh, Zamimi uh, swore that the humans took prisoners, but what did he know? Thus far, Yayap had been unimpressed with Zamimi's plans. Which, you know what? You and me both, yeah. girl. Like, I mean, good lord. Uh, uh-huh. Yayap is reading this. He is reading this situation correctly. <laughs> he is. He's totally right. He's totally right. So, yeah. He's, he's, and the, and the Marines find him and, uh, and they, <laughs> they literally, he's, he pretends I, there's a, there's a part where it says it would be much easier for me to, uh, to, if it would be way better if I was unconscious in this moment. So he went ahead and went unconscious because he was already just <laughs> beaten to a pulp and he's yeah. just like, uh, you know what? This be, I, I want to act real good. Let's go method. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Passes out. They throw him in the back of a uh, in the back of Marlon Brando would it, only uh, dream. Of <laughs> oh God, Marlon Brando as yeah yeah as yeah yeah directed. The, can you imagine the actor studio interview directed by Orson Welles? Between oh my God, him and Marlon Brando and James Lipton are all in hell, <laughs> and they're just talking about Brando's moment as yeah yeah as directed. By Orson Welles. Oh, yeah. Orson Welles is um, actually Orson Welles is not in the room. He is bitching about it to Peter Bogdanovich. <laughs> R.I.P. Peter Bogdanovich, by the way. <laughs> just. Oh, my God. Oh, just yeah. Passed away yeah. As of this, and when this episode comes out, it'll have been like a month ago. <laughs> but yeah. R.I.P. Peter Peter uh, Orson Welles best friend, Peter Bogdanovich. <laughs> Kicked Orson's ass in the end, didn't you, Pete? <laughs> you won, uh, my friend. Uh, so we get back to Master Chief. He's getting closer to the command center. He steals a ghost. He's got to ride it up this pyramid, which is actually a really, uh, you know, this is kind of an infamous uh, level mm-hmm. in Halo. You got to ride your 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 way up this pyramid because the, uh, the, the command center is going to be at the top. Now, this is where I'm talking about. He takes out a hunter. He kills a hunter. And he knows they come in pairs. He looks for the other hunter, shoots it in the back, and kills it. And I can't help but think, I feel like all the other ones are harder to kill than this. Because <laughs> he even says, I wish I had a rocket launcher. And then he just kind of unloads the clip it. in the other one's back. And he's just like, he's dead. Oh, this is, like I was being dramatic but, before, but, I guess. And this in the game, it takes so like... If you're using the standard marine weapons, it takes like you have to bait and dodge the hunter oh, like four or God. five times, shooting it in the back. Yeah, that that guy soaks up Such so a bullet much sponge. ammo. Uh, and yeah, so he just he just does that. Um, there's a there's a hilarious scene where there's like some covenant with a turret gun, and he just mows them down. Um, and it's kind of like it made me think of the Indiana Jones mm-hmm. uh, shooting the guy with the sword. <laughs> like, it's just, he sees this opportunity where we're expecting yeah. another grand battle. And it's just really he's just, tired. Ah, fuck it. He's really tired. Yeah. 
he says, I've had a long day and, uh, and mows him down. And then finally makes his way to the apex of the pyramid and finds the command center. And he pops Cortana in there. Uh, and she just is like a squirrel on cocaine when they throw her in there. She loves it. She's turning she colors. She loves it. She's like the... the she is the she is the 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 person who in Twilight Zone who wants everybody to be gone so he can read his books. <laughs> right, right. She just she's got all this information coming to her all at once, and she loses her mind, and then all of a sudden finds information on the flood and starts to realize that the Covenant discovered something here, something horrible. Horrible. She also horrible. calls Master and- Chief a barbarian. And she that's right because he's because he's trying because he because yeah she hurts his feelings she hurts Master Chief's feelings because he's been told this is a weapon he's been told that this is a weapon he says okay so show me how to use the weapon she goes it's not like a fucking club you fucking barbarian it's like oh <laughs> oh MC <laughs> but yeah so she's like we got to go find keys because um uh the weapons cache he's looking for it's not really we can't let him get inside uh too late for that mm. we're in nope, section four of the book now section chapter four. eight chapter eight um the, the the section is 343 guilty spark and uh it has yeah. a little poster of of master chief getting his arm wrapped up by a flood uh a flood yes. a floodling what's this the floodling of a member of the flood <laughs> Um, a floodite. A floodite. Um, floodite. I, th- I like that one. Floodite. Yeah. So he's now he's getting j- dropped off by uh, foe hammer uh, at the swamp where yeah. he was, where Master Chief was last last seen. And the goal is to find keys. Yeah. Now let's let's find keys. Meanwhile, we jump inside Key's head, and he's losing yeah. memories. Like the. Fl- this is good. This was this was good yeah. writing. I like Basically, this. the flood is like sucking memories out of his mind it, and it's yeah. like it's making it clear like this is the last time he's going to remember this <laughs> right he's he's losing memories and he has to he's got this buzzing chant in his head he can't move he can't even speak and he's trying to kind of hold on to these different memories and they don't have a it's not all bad memories or all good memories they're just memories memories of of the first guy he killed mm-hmm. of a promotion he had like all kinds of stuff uh, and as we go on, he kind of starts to really, he needs to hold on to these memories as best as he can, if only to um, retain some level of humanity here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so we jump back to uh, to Chief, and he is now stalking through the swamp. Um, and he's finding, yeah. he's finding um, uh, basically, uh, he, he finds a wreck um uh of a is it a yeah he finds that. a wreck of a pelican he also finds uh a wreck of a covenant drop ship um yeah like just it's like and they're both like just sinking into the swamp muck um right yeah there's like there's, and, and and we get this whole thing with him like figuring out what went down like it's clear based on where the bodies are that the drop ship came down fine that the people got out, but that there was a firefight outside. There was a firefight! Right, right. And and I'm not sure who that's for. Like, we already know that Master Chief is, like, good at this shit. I don't know. It's It it feels a little padding. Yeah, it feels a little padding, padding, but at the same time, I think it would be cool if there was more, um, if there was, like, a book that just focused on Master Chief doing forensic investigations or like a Spartan. I mean, that could be kind of neat, yeah. you know? Um, that there, could be fun. there are Warhammer. And, and more to your are, point, I really do think we know who should play Master Chief in the Netflix show they're going to make. It's Will. Yeah, of course. He's got to play Master Chief. <laughs> I'd buy it. I'm something of a Spartan myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we get, we get, he finds a shotgun. This is incredibly Finds important a shotgun. Uh, for anybody for anybody who's fought the flood. You know exactly how important a shotgun is. Um, there's no opposition until a couple of jackals pass him. And then we get into more shooty stuff, more shooty stuff. Uh, and it's 
Like get some more shooty yeah, fighty. Shooty fighty, kill some jackals, kill some grunts. Um, and then he starts finding and bodies f- of like, yeah, he finds this structure and he's literally following the dead bodies through the structure to figure out where he needs. To- I thought that was a nice touch. That's yeah. Interesting. Um, and they're not looking too good. They're like ripped apart no. dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is not looking fantastic. Um, so he starts going down into the structure, which, um, yeah, that's a, that's a bad sign. Um, Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's there's some jackals down there. He kills them. Um, like, it's it's weird because it, had he stopped, he probably would have noticed that the jackals are also probably afraid of whatever the fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, eventually, he finds a half crazed marine. Yeah, who is shooting at him and telling, shouting about. How, you know, you're not going to turn me like the rest of them. But as Kevin pointed out, if he had stopped and done a little recon work and like listened to the jackals, he probably would have got this information a lot yeah. faster. <laughs> yeah, because they're all they're all just like terrified of what's going on. Whoever's still alive yeah. down there. And this Marine literally tries to shoot Master Chief to death. <laughs> yeah. And, and who he, he disarms the guy. Uh, the guy tells Master Chief to find his own hiding place, uh, which is hilarious. Uh, Master Chief doesn't want to leave the guy, but he realizes that there are a lot of Marines ahead of him. That, yeah, it's, that a, it's a numbers game. So he's just like, just it is. He, be, he tells the guy, like, you know, the exit's that way. Just like get up right. the elevator and get out, you know. Uh, but the guy. And he just feels. Yeah, he's it. he is. Uh, uh, try not to cry, cry a lot meme. Uh. <laughs> right, right. And so Master Chief decides he's going to go with, you know, the, the needs of many over the needs of a few. And uh, he ends up in a room. He starts to feel watched. He's getting real kind of paranoid yeah. and starts feel feeling like he's being watched. Uh, and he's a room that's in a room filled with shells, with spent shell casings, um, but no more. There's Marines. nothing there. And nothing he's there. also... Um, starting starting to feel alone. Um, he had gotten very yeah. used to. Um, uh, he had grown accustomed to Cortana's face. Uh, to be <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly um, it. And she's not there right now because she's uh, she's back in the control center, uh, the Halo control center, still kind of like learning everything she can about what's going on um, with yeah. with Halo. Yeah. And uh, and so he he finds, but he does find a, a video. He finds video footage, um, of uh, these fleshy blobs. Uh, that it's basically he's seeing the last yeah. moments of Key's squad going down. Yeah, to these this is a perfect time and for a dead space audio log. <laughs> pretty much, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what he gets: screaming, shooting, fleshy blobs that he can't quite identify. And then suddenly these fleshy bobs basically become real and start swarming him in that room. And uh, and he starts uh, making with the shooty. Fighty. He makes with the shooty fighty. Yeah. Um, the uh, so we have a, um, a a scene jump over to. Um, oh, yes. So while this is happening, while 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 Master Chief is doing the shooty fighty, um, uh <laughs> alpha base um is getting some weird call signs being barked at them because yeah. there's a pelican a charlie 217 that they thought was destroyed and mm-hmm. um it's coming, coming in hot. hot and they're like all right you can come in and uh wellesley's like yeah is let's let's get people ready to like figure out what this is uh so tell them to land on pad three and we'll have we'll have people there to meet it um right so it cuts to inside the pelican and there's this uh there's this pilot who is just like so how did i do and and zuko danny zuka uh zuko is just like you did great and then he chokes him out with a garrote yeah which i had to wonder in this moment what was it that he promised the human because, like, I understand the idea of, like, 
taking a human hostage, right. negotiating with him, trying to get something for it. Uh, and the human doesn't say like, please don't kill me. Uh, you know, I did, I did good. Right. So please don't, don't hurt me or something like that. It kind of, but it's kind of worded more like he's expecting a reward right. of some kind. Yeah. It, it, he, um, uh, so the human inquired, how did I do? Uh, extremely well. Uh, thank you. And then he chokes him out. Right. And so it's, it's very weird. It's a, it's, it's kind of a weird moment, but what's important is that we have betrayal from within and, uh, Zuka's using it to basically, he's got a pelican that is filled with covenant soldiers. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, with, with, uh, invisible, the, the, uh, yeah, the cloaked, uh, covenant, uh, elites. Um, there's, and then there was going to be another six drop ships. Once the, once alpha base was engaged with those initial elites, yeah. then another six drop ships were going to come. Um, basically yeah. they, they, they land and, um, uh, and, and Zuka's looking, for, he's there the way, looking for Master Chief. Point. He's looking for Master Chief who isn't there. No. no. Um, and, and so, yeah, cause yeah, yeah, is, is in a jail cell basically three yes. levels one level down um oh yeah. oh yeah yeah um he had seen this so and, and i love when they started because he's trying to decide whether he not he wouldn't be better just staying with the humans instead <laughs> it's like take me with you <laughs> yeah he's just like you know what these guys take prisoners maybe this wouldn't be so bad if i just stayed with them yeah. and by the time he's like but well he's in he's caught in thought with that Zuka suddenly shows up to rescue him, and he's super surprised about this turn of events until he realizes that Zuka is only doing this because he figures Ziyayep knows where Master yes. Chief is. So he's kind of like, "Oh fuck you! So you, know, you don't love you don't me, Ziyayep." <laughs> no. So Ziyayep's like, "Yeah, he's uh, guarding some uh, some ships that they some ghosts that they uh, captured on a landing pad over there." And Zuka's like, oh, yeah. take me to it. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the Marines are not hit, faring that well against the... Um, they started out no, on, the, on their great. back heels um, fighting against the Covenant uh, during this, like, incursion. Uh, but it starts to turn... Ra they, like, they kind of get themselves... So they do one... They, the one thing they do is they, they throw gasoline... <laughs> They start yeah. spraying gasoline and it starts hitting the invisible troopers and then they light them on fire and they just light them up. <laughs> it's pretty great. Like it's, I mean, it, that is not, that is, not, if you told me, you're like, all right, this novelization of this game, this, here's the mystery. Tell us what game this is. There's going to be a bunch of Marines that are going to pour gasoline on these invisible guys and light them up that way, like improvised Molotovs, yeah. basically. What game is that? I wouldn't have fucking guessed no, Halo. Like, not at all. <laughs> it's some really brutal. That's shit. like that's like um, uh, some alien versus predator versus uh, yeah. uh like Marines or something <laughs> like type of. Like I could see that in Fallout. I could see that in like any number of game worlds. Not this one. So it's it's down and yeah, dirty. It's down it's and dirty. Cool. They but so they kind of they kind of turn they turn the tide um, with their their anti aircraft guns. Wellesley controls the anti aircraft guns. A couple of one of the drop ships gets taken right out of the sky. Doesn't even get a chance to land. Um, yeah. And and basically they they start. Uh, sniper the sniper is just set up and they start shooting the the the, yeah. the grunts and the jackals and the elites while they're still in the the drop ships up in the air yeah. just taking them out <laughs> um so they would hit the ground dead <laughs> um so uh so yeah uh yeah yeah meanwhile um basically has to uh <laughs> decides to take uh Z Z zuko to where yeah. he quote unquote master chief is <laughs> yeah. And yeah yeah he's i'm gonna t i'm gonna t i'm taking you there and, yeah, yeah. and pulls then, a gun on and him. then just basic <laughs> and he puts a holds a gun on him <laughs> yeah yeah basically says yeah you know what i was fucking with you he's not here 
And so Zook was like, why, why you're pissing me off? Why did you bring me here? And he goes, because you're the only one who knows to drive one of these ships. So you're going to go ahead and drive it and holds a gun yeah, on the he's guy. Like, he's like, guess what? Your fucking battle is over. Like we yeah. got to like, I'm, I'm saving both of our hides by making you get out of here because they lost. Right. <laughs> right. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Like for actually using his like not. I mean, it's one thing to be like the cowardly goblin character who wants to survive and get out by. But he's also being actually pretty smart. He's like, look, the, the fight's over, <laughs> asshole. Let's go. Uh so yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool note for Yeah. Pretty, I there. like where Yeah Yap's character is going, and I am excited Dig. to follow along um his journey. It's, it's so good. It's a good journey. Um meanwhile, uh <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Um we're um we're getting some some uh some some good shooty action from from master chief he yeah. is dealing master chief taking out the he flood. is fighting the flood um and he's and by the way his strategy for killing them is pretty accurate to how the best strategy for killing them in the yeah, game yeah as is. i was it's reading like, it i was like these feel like tips for the game <laughs> right it's kind of like mega, man, like mega 2. man 2 it's like except Except they didn't end the chapter upside down going, did you know if you use the shotgun against the flood, you can kill a whole lot more of them? <laughs> did you know that Airman is weak to shotgun? Right. <laughs> but aren't we all? <laughs> anyway, chapter 19. <laughs> like <laughs> Chapter 19, Hemingway Man. Right. <laughs> Do you know who else is weak to shotgun? Mom and Dad. Anyhow, <laughs> Heat Man looks like a lighter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man got Menendez Brothers weapon. <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, God. So <laughs> it got dark. It always was. It was always gonna get. It got dark. dark. It, well, we're talking about the flood, so it's getting real dark now because Master mm. Chief now mm. is um, not only fighting the flood, but he's uh, fighting zombified elites. Yeah, and he's quickly, and you know, they don't waste a lot of time with him going, wait a minute, wait, these used to be Covenant soldiers, what's going on? He figures out what's going on pretty quick, which I appreciate. I appreciate. That's the the realization gap from from yeah. experiencing zombie to acknowledging zombie, you gotta hit that pretty close. Uh, you gotta hit it close, I mean, man. we're way beyond the saturation point for zombies and undead and, and what have you. You got to move. You got to accept it and move on. If that shit happened in the real yeah, world, yeah. Um, I mean, well, OK, 55 percent of people would not acknowledge that there was a zombie e epidemic. Right. Right. But. Um, and then 25 percent people would acknowledge there were zombies, but would blame would say that it was part of. Yeah. Going on. Uh, this is this is part of the, the you know, the this uprising is, and JFK zombie JFK. J right. <laughs> And the rest of us would be, uh, dead. We'd be, We'd dead. be dead. So it wouldn't be so bad. At least we wouldn't have. To so zombified elites, uh, <laughs> zombified elites, and uh, and and then Master Chief runs into young Private Mendoza, mm. who was uh, he he's remembers dead. from from before. Yeah, remember? he's from before. Private Ma Manuel Mendoza. Um, he's dead. He is. He yeah. is totally chunkified into he is just uh, like parts of his body are just animated by the the sludge that is the flood yeah um and uh mendoza the mendoza thing um <laughs> mendoza or rather the thing that had once been mendoza and uh yeah you know who master chief really needs is uh kurt russell mm. Yes. Yeah. Don't, Don't we, all. we all? I mean, uh, have you seen that man? <laughs> I'll take, I'll take him now. I'll take him in the eighties. Any Kurt Russell's good. He's beautiful. By me. <laughs> Any Kurt Russell's good. <laughs> Kurt Russell. <laughs> Doesn't matter when you get Kurt Russell. That's. He, he likes to drink. He likes to party. I'm gonna hang out yeah. with Kurt Russell. Why not? Uh, and just and maybe just just hug him a little. Just, just uh, cuddle a little bit. Just just hold him. Just hold him in the darkness. <laughs> Uh, but you're right. He def desperately needs Kurt Russell in this moment. 
nobody trusts anybody nobody anymore. trusts least of all private mendoza <laughs> we're all very tired we're all very tired <laughs> and and master chief just he just murders murders the shit out of him just, just blasts him apart with that shotgun thank god he found that naval shotgun. thank god he found that 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 really worked out yeah, great that worked out perfectly and we get a little another moment with jake with uh captain jacob keys who um yes uh he was not in fall of reach we have determined he, he was, was not. not it was a different character it was not him uh, um, different guy that is a that different is a guy. callback if anybody is that's, that's what they call that's a what they call a callback so he's trying to remember uh who he is he has he, so he starts repeating a mantra which is just his name and serial number and it's pissing off the yeah. parasite, which I thought he like he senses that him remembering his name and his serial number is angering the par- I I thought that was such a that nice is a nice touch. touch. It, really it kind cool. of gives the the idea that the parasite can't do its its mutation shit until it t- completely takes over his mind, basically. Right. So for now, he's and, just and through- because he's remembering his name and serial number, he has stopped it. Yeah, he's holding it back for a little while. He's kind of, yeah. Like, this is what you imagine people are doing anytime there's a movie with a person who has psychic abilities and you're fighting against them and the only thing they know how to do in the movie is for the person to go, like they're constipated. Uh, He's basically doing that, but uh, in a far more effective way. Um, So so, uh, the one final scene is Master Chief uh, running into some living uh marines um and they're like uh hey uh we should <laughs> sir i would advise that we leave <laughs> and respectfully, respectfully let's get the fuck and, out of uh, here the chief goes that's command thinking corporal let's go <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> i like that like, yeah you're right we should leave <laughs> takes a minute to go now you're thinking like an officer let's <laughs> run away <laughs> which Fair. Fair. I mean, he, Fair even enough. Master Chief is like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, ladies Stay and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> and he's, he's gone. He's gone. He says, strangely, to much to his surprise, it felt good to enter the stinking swamp. Very good indeed. Yeah. So, and that's and that's the end of yeah. that chapter. And that's that's, that's what, what we, we got. got. Um. Yeah, there's some fun moments in those chapters. Uh, you know, going back and revisiting them. I think it's I think it's um I like this series of chapters better than some of the chunks that we read earlier in the book where it was kind of yeah. samey battle stuff. It it does feel like he's getting a real handle for more I know he always threw something into the battle scenes that made them stand out right. a little bit. But now it feels like the battles full sure. on are feeling a little more. It, it, he's really he's really finding a rhythm with them now, and it's 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 really nice. There's a shit ton of fighting in what we just talked about, and, uh, and it was actually really enjoyable to read. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a so slog um, like some of the yeah no, some exactly. of the other scenes were exactly. a little bit sluggish. They, the only other thing I would say is the 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 scenes with Master Chief uh, doing like the silent cartographer. And uh, the control room scenes for Master Chief were a little, eh, because they yes, were just so beat for beat from the game. It's just a little, yeah. It's a shame, and it, it's understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get it. I totally get why that would be. Um, but it, it is a shame that the mo- and you even said this earlier that the moments we come back to Master Chief are the ones where I go. <laughs> It's Halo for Christ's sake! Halo. Like, why am I bummed out? And my, when we come back to the Master thing Chief? I'm least looking forward to is the Master Chief moments. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I think it's. I think there's so, a few. Yeah. A, there's a few things at play is because uh, Deets kind of uh, like Nylon before him is hamstrung by the character of Master Chief because there's yeah. not a whole lot yeah. going on in there. I mean. Not right now, no. One of the best character moments is when he gets his feelings hurt by Cortana calling him a barbarian. <laughs> We're even aware that he could get his feelings hurt. It's it's fantastic. It's really good stuff. And, and yeah, I totally agree. We 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 spent a whole book 
sitting in the inner monologue of of Master yeah. Chief. And now we've come to it and it, we're yeah. not. Uh and it's a little jarring at times. And and I will say and I think I think the the thing that Dietz brings back from it all is that these supporting characters, these covenant characters, these uh these hell hell riders, you know, like like just all these guys um are yeah. great. Uh, and they have, and it shows you how good of a writer he yeah. is. Uh, it makes me want to read more of his stuff because it's like when left to his own it's, devices, it's fun and they're stuff. like, "Here's yeah. a world." Yeah, he he's a good writer uh, when he doesn't have to follow the the, 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 the Prima the, strategy the, guide. <laughs> right, that's exactly it. So he's a good yeah. writer. Like there is no question about him being a good writer. It's just it's he's just kind of. He's a little hamstrung. Yeah, you're right. I think I think he's a little hamstrung, and um, and it's one of those things where I'm always interested in, and I think this is way too early to make this judgment in the podcast, but we'll see as we go through. I have a theory about books that are written written as direct adaptations of a game versus books that are written as sequels and prequels to to a game. And right. my theory is when it's a when it's like a sequel or prequel or just an in-universe story that the writer has a little bit more flexibility on, you're going to get a better product. The only thing I, the I only totally thing agree. I'm going to say yeah. that really doesn't give me any favors in that argument is Dead Space, which was yeah, really had as much flexibility as you can get. Um, and it was. Uh, yeah, um, it was. It was, it was, it, it was, was too, too much, much. too, much, too flexibility. much flexibility. Um, yeah, it was, but it was, yeah. So fall of reach, um, still, I still say fall of reach is a better book than the flood. Obviously, um, Agreed. it was, you know, had a little bit more flexibility. So that's why I'm, th I'm curious what's like, what's resident evil Caliban cove going to be like, and what's, uh, some of the other, I'm looking forward yeah, to that too. Because actually. the, the, um, the Perry's were always pretty good writers so you know yeah um but that'll i think it'll be fun considering we started with the resident evil books um and 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 miss perry uh i'm gonna be very interested in how after we've read all a bunch of other video game novelizations when we come to and i'm playing with our schedule yeah. right now uh because <laughs> we really should move yeah 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 up. Maybe um, around our one year anniversary, uh, I, we should aim to to do our. Ooh, yeah, good yeah. call, good call. That would be June, so yeah. that's perfect. Okay, um, yeah. So it's uh, I'm going to be very interested to see how it compares now because I remember us thinking it was a little mediocre, it was a little laughable, and now with all the stuff we play, uh, we've put behind us, I have to wonder uh, if our opinion of it won't have gone up, <laughs> yeah. especially with her being able to write her exactly. own story and not be beholden to a narrative structure. She's not writing. Right. Rails. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but that does it for tonight's episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. It, we truly appreciate uh, the support that you've shown us uh, over the past seven months or so. It's been a wild ride and we're really looking forward to continuing on this journey. Um, if you can, please share us with, friends of yours the only way a podcast grows is word of mouth and we've been we've been growing every month so clearly some of you have been able to to get the word out and we really appreciate it uh if you can rate us five stars on apple itunes or apple podcasts um also spotify allows for uh ratings now so if you could drop a five star rating on spotify if that's your platform of choice and i know 35 percent of you that is your platform of choice because I look at the analytics probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> proud to say, proud to say that we are uh, in the top 10 video game podcasts in. That Argentina. is. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you for everybody from Argentina who listens to us. That is, thank that is very huge. Much. That is awesome. It's, it's That's really, really neat. neat. So <laughs> thank you so much. And, 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 uh, and Kevin's right. You know, like we see the growth every month and that has everything to do with you guys passing it around and telling your friends and that kind of thing. And we are insanely grateful because we're, I, I didn't know we'd be doing this for, we've worked on projects before. I didn't know we were going to go seven yeah, months no. like this. This is seven months and fantastic. we're, we're going to go on for seven more years. 
100 years, <laughs> pixel it. 100 years. I mean, God, have you seen how many video game novels? Good Lord, there's there are? so we'll many. Fine. There's so many. We'll be fine. We haven't even touched FNAF. We haven't even yet. touched FNAF. We have, we have but, but we don't um, talk about it. We don't. We don't talk about FNAF. We don't talk about Bruno. We, we don't, don't talk, talk about, about Bruno. <laughs> it's a fact. Um. So yeah, that'll do it for today's episode. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Good night.